Now, the UN Security Council is to hold another emergency meeting on Monday. That's after the United Arab Emirates called for another one, seeking a humanitarian pause to the fighting in Gaza. Last week, the General Assembly voted in favour of a resolution for an immediate truce. The US and its ally Israel were among the countries who voted against. Uh, Kimberly Halkett is live at the White House, but first let's head straight to UNHQ in New York. Uh, Gabriel Elizondo is standing by there. And so, Gabe, first up, the UN Security Council has failed to agree so far. Might this change? Well, we'll see. I can tell you that here at the UN headquarters, uh, they are watching events in Gaza very closely, and uh, many of the member states are quite concerned. This emergency meeting of the Security Council called by the United Arab Emirates is expected to happen at about 19 GMT, 3 p.m. local time here in New York. The Security Council is expected to be briefed by top UN officials. Uh, in the region uh, from UNRWA, the United Nations Relief and Work Agency in Gaza, as well as the uh, OSHA, the Coordination for Humanitarian Affairs Office. It's important. Let me just point out the latest numbers from the UN UNRWA. They're saying that now 63 of their staff members have been killed in Gaza from the Israeli bombardment. They are saying that they are housing about 672 thousand uh, internally displaced people in Gaza in about 149 UN shelters. And they say just in the last 72 hours, UNRWA is reporting that 44 of their facilities in Gaza have been damaged from bombardment. Now, aside from this, I will point out that we are hearing that uh, Malta and the UAE are working on another draft resolution behind the scenes uh, for the Security Council. Already four drafts have been uh, voted down at the Security Council and or vetoed since this conflict began. But we're hearing that the elected 10, if you will, of the Security Council are working on another draft resolution uh, urgently given the escalation and uh, trying to get that to a point where perhaps it could come to a vote uh, in the next day or two. All right, Gabe, back with you as, the, as that goes on uh, at the UN headquarters. Let's uh, cross over to Washington, D.C., to the White House. In fact, our White House correspondent, uh, Kimberly Halkett, uh, is standing by for us there. And, Kimberly, so the president, Joe Biden, he's under pressure uh, nearly a year before the election. How does that factor into everything that's going on as far as his uh, stance and position is concerned? Well, overall, the American public has been largely supportive of what the president has been doing in terms of support for Israel, and that is also indicated in the U.S. Congress. But when you dive a little bit deeper and you look at what Democrats specifically uh, feel about the president's handling of this conflict, that's where there start to be some problems for the U U.S. president. And what we've been seeing among Democrats, particularly over the last decade, is a decline in support. And it has to do with the fact that there is growing concern about the plight of the Palestinian people among the more progressive wing of the Democratic Party. Uh, we've had a number of Democrats that have sent a letter to Joe Biden calling for him to uh, call for a ceasefire. Uh, we've also had uh, members of Congress who have said that there needs to be a more urgent uh, priority put on bringing humanitarian aid to Gaza. So uh, when you look at those numbers, they've actually declined pretty sharply since this conflict began. One month ago, he had about 86 percent approval rating within the Democratic Party for his foreign policy and specifically his handling of, of uh, Israel issues and, and areas in the region. But that has fallen about 11 percentage points, and that is a pretty dramatic drop, considering it has been such a short time span. So this is a problem for a president who's looking to get win re-election in a year's time. Kimberly, thanks very much indeed. Kimberly Halkett there at, uh, at uh, yeah, the White House in Washington, D.C. Uh, let's uh, bring in Abdul Hamid ICM, who's a professor of political science and Middle East studies at Rutgers University. He joins us here in uh, Doha. Great to have you with us. Thank um, you, Nick. As we've just been hearing, the United States uh, very much focused on what's going on. And it is, in fact, the key to what's going on uh, in Gaza and has the power to ease the situation with a phone call yeah. from Joe Biden to Benjamin Netanyahu. Is that likely to happen, do you think? 
They could do that. They could at least allow a draft resolution the Security Council to pass. Mm. There is now circulating a draft. I just looked at it before I came. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it repeats the points that the uh, U.S. is insisting on, that to condemn taking hostages, to allow to release all hostages, to condemn Hamas, but also to call for immediate uh, humanitarian pause. It's still not final. I mean, the United Arab Emirates trying with other non-permanent uh, members to bring almost the same text that had passed in the General Assembly to bring it to the Security Council, saying that it has been approved by over 120 countries, so it's rather passed here in the Security Council. Mm. So if the U.S. wants to ease the situation, it could let it go. Mm. And it could put some pressure. It could Empowered do. by the Security Council resolution right. to tell Netanyahu... Enough is enough. Stop it. It could do, but what's yeah. your gut feeling? Will it? I don't think the U.S. is now uh, is uh, restraining Netanyahu in any way. It's more for uh, electoral reasons, one, one thing. And there are so much support among the military establishment in, mm. in Washington to support Israel without any restriction. That is, that's unfortunate. There is no yeah. serious voices coming from the administration to... To, to tell Biden that is there are a tragedy is in the making. We mm. have to to interfere. We have to do something. But there is a growing voice within the country amongst the people. Yes. And indeed, protests around the world are growing. That voice is getting louder and louder. And sooner or later, surely the leaderships are going to have to take notice. It could. Most of the us in the streets are the young generation, a lot of peace activists. Many Jewish voices also mm. uh, going to the streets, especially... In, Grand Central Station and the Congress, so that could make a difference. However, what makes a difference is some kind of dissension among the European allies. And it's moving their way. I mean, the Europeans might not continue with this blind uh, support of the United States policy vis-a-vis -vis Israel, especially mm -hmm. with, the, with, with now news about the tragedy taking place and their warning that there might be diseases and there might be also... Uh, hundreds of, or maybe thousands people under the rubble. So f for how long the UN uh, can, uh, uh, the uh, international community can accept this going on? I mean, this ha hundreds of thousands of people are under the threat of extinction if they don't stop it now. Mm. Uh, this video released by Hamas of, yeah. of the uh, prisoners in Gaza, what do you make of that and, and the pressure that it will put on the Israeli leadership? I think it adds more pressure on Netanyahu. It says also that the hostages are in safe place. They are fine and fed, and they are frustrated with their government. So that adds also to the pressure. And uh, it, it, it shows also there might be some kind of movement on that uh, direction and that we are willing to release them if you address also the issues. Well, Hamas have said that, haven't yeah, they? They said they, they are willing to do to are. swap all, all their prisoners for all the Palestinian prisoners in Israel. Yeah. So has that got any traction, do you think? I think there might be some release of some prisoners, OK? Mm. I mean, the Israel arrested about 1,600 from the West Bank in the last few weeks, since October 7th. Yeah. So that is... Uh, there are about 300 children. They could release that. There are about 33 women. They could release that. So there could be, I mean, if, through a, a good mediator, mm -hmm. just like that of Qatar, for example. Right. They could reach kind of an agreement to release good number of Palestinians who are not that of, uh, like, uh, with, with, with a life sentence, but at least some of those civilians. We could call them civilians when you have 300 uh, children. When you have about 800 in detention center, they had never been put on trial. So why they are there? You, you, mm -hmm. don't, you, you don't indict them and you don't release them. So they could be released. So if, I think there might be some breakthrough in that direction. All right. Uh, Abdul Hamid, there's much to talk about, but we'll do it later. For the time being, thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you so much.